What I want to talk about very briefly today, it's not going to be a really long one, but it's a few questions that I've seen come up and people have sent me and I've seen them in the members chat recently, is thinking about what you're actually questioning. And this comes down to one, not wasting time questioning things that you can't know the answers to, but also what the purpose of your questioning is. Um, I talked about this at the beginning of the week, not about the purpose of the questioning, but about something that I felt I'd seen in gold. And what you're trying to do is understand what the implication of that might be, as opposed to trying to understand why someone might do it. And that's the key distinction. Your business is not to know what other people are doing or why they're doing it. Ultimately, you're never going to be able to find that out. And that's the important thing here. So the whole point of any questioning of what's going on is to direct future trade, i.e. to direct what you're going to do next. So what you need to be questioning is what's going on. Where's the market going? As in just simple, what direction is the market in? Have we broken any significant areas? Are we now looking for a potentially larger move? And then, you know, something I so often talk about is how is it doing that? How well is it going about it? You know, have you got a market that has, let's say, broken a level, hot pulls back, continues, pulls back, finds buyers, continues? Is that happening? Or is it break the level and a steady dribble that's beginning to slow down? Because whilst both things are a market that is going up, they're doing it in a very different way, and this has implications for what might come next. And you also ask yourself, okay, well, if you can see that these two are doing it in very different ways, what does that mean? What does that mean for the people buying it in here? And this is where you're not trying to put yourself in other people's shoes per se and try and work out why they're doing it. What you're trying to do is ask yourself, where are they going to give up on this, more to the point, rather than necessarily why are they doing it? And you can understand that from the way a market is trading. And that's the key thing there. And in understanding the way it's trading, this is where you're going, to, you're going to be able to answer these questions from your sort of debrief and at the end of the day, how you describe what the action's been like, how you assess how is the recent action and how well is the market moving because in doing that you can see how this is going to change you can see that if price action here is very slow and steady to the upside doesn't really get a great deal of action when it sells then what you can see is that if we suddenly start seeing selling coming in and that selling getting faster and faster we're seeing a change and this can mean that seeing as this has been such a grind there is very little space or place to actually buy this on the way back, meaning that you can get a roll over and a quicker move to the downside, giving you something along those lines. Whereas a move like this, because it has moved up, built a foundation to move higher and gone again, may well find support at areas like this and find it harder to drop. So you get in a sense from the way a market does something, the way it moves, as to what it's going to do next and also how it is likely to do that. The other thing, that, the thing that I think gets people in a lot of trouble and you often see discussions around this of, you know, what are these participants trying to do? What are these participants doing? These participants act here, these ones act here. You're, you're answering questions that you can't know the answer to. You can't know what a specific person is going to do. So whenever you feel that you're moving into a realm where you're trying to answer questions about what other people's motivation is, you're, you're not serving yourself very well because what you're trying to do is you're trying to answer a question about a specific person, entity, group, few people, whoever. You're trying to answer a specific question about them and understand their motivation. Ultimately, their motivation doesn't matter. If I want to buy 100 buns or I want to buy 100 S&Ps, why does it matter why I want to do it? And I see this come out and people just say, I don't know why someone would want to buy it up there. 
No, you might not. Equally, no one else does. But it's whether that causes a reaction. Yeah, if, if you're thinking, why in the world would you buy it up here? It doesn't make any sense. But if people keep on buying it up there, well, the market will keep going. It's not about whether you think they're right or wrong, because what you're doing is you're judging someone else's motivation and opinion based on your own perception of what should happen, which equally isn't right or wrong. You, know, you don't know whether you're right or wrong. So as soon as you start assuming someone else is right or wrong based on the comparison to your thoughts, you've completely lost the answer to that question anyway, and you can't possibly answer it. We saw this um, yesterday in the chat, and I, I can't remember exactly the wording of it, but there, there was the 4,000 lot in the Bund, which we looked at in the debrief, and people were saying, well, why are they doing it? What do they want to do with that? Who knows? They might be trying to get out of a position. They might be trying to get short somewhere. It could be that someone has misplaced an order and is now probably in trouble today, that they're 4,000 lot short Bund. Who knows? And you're not ever going to know that. And no one's going to phone you up next week and go, oh, do you know why I was selling 4,000 buns? Not going to happen. So it's irrelevant because you can't learn anything from that. What you can learn is how the market reacted to it and what you could do around that. That's the bit you can learn. So a couple of different examples. I talked about this going into the beginning of this week in gold. Now, in no way could I have predicted that. Not a chance. The only way that move comes about is due to the news. But the questions you're asking as this is developing will help you in your ability to recognise the scope of this, but also to give you a skew towards the downside. I'm not saying you could be in this beforehand, but it may well have been reasonable to be thinking along those lines. That what we'd seen here is, yes, gold's on the way up, and as we talked about Last week, beginning of this week, gold's on the way up and significantly broke 1937 level. But from there, this whole move has been very slow, it's struggled, it's never really found any momentum behind it. So what that's telling you is that even though people are willing to buy, you've got a lot of people who are willing to stop that. And they'll sell to them, they're preventing the move up. And you see this when you're trading it. It puts in this really sort of sticky, tough move higher. And yeah, that's my own personal way of describing it. You, you describe it how you wish, as long as you understand what you mean by it. But when it puts in that kind of sticky move up and it never makes you feel like it's got any more movement in it, what that's telling you is there's going to be people buying that, getting nowhere. Why they're buying it, who knows, but they're buying it and it's not really moving. So you can see what the activity is like here. And then if that starts to change, and okay, this changed suddenly in a very big way. But if it starts to change, this move wouldn't be unreasonable anyway. It's the follow-on that you wouldn't be necessarily expected. But if you started to see a bit more volume coming in, a bit more momentum, playing this back to 37 is quite reasonable anyway. And then potentially a drop down towards 23. Going for much more on a normal day, perhaps not in the realms of plausible normality, but it's something that you could be looking for. So that's what I mean by asking yourself about what's actually going on. You can see it from a, you know, more tangible references as well. Volume here at a point where you know, we've held the level. This is the chance to go higher. Volume's pretty muted. Delta's falling, so people are actually selling this more as you're going up. That's not a good sign of continuation. So you're piecing together these, these bits of information that's helping you understand how the market's going about what it's doing, not why. You know, you're not interested in why someone's doing something. That, that doesn't matter. It's about how they're going about doing it that's going to create a change. And this was the example of <clears throat> being asked, well, and this, this is the quote, I want to be short burns, and scratch the trade because people were buying 100 lots up here. So people were buying 100 lots up around here, didn't like the trade, so scratched it. <coughs> Who wants to buy it up there? I know people playing the breaks to the upside, 
why would they be doing it with such poor volume and low delta? Is it stops I see triggered and do the stops appear as a buy order on the ladder? You're asking a lot of questions here about why someone would do something, what their motivation is. Yes, <clears throat> volume's not great. Delta, I wouldn't say is low up at that point, but volume's not looking great. And yeah, that may, from your own point of view, not suggest that you should be buying it up here. But someone else, you don't know. So there's no point in looking at something and go, well, why would they do that? Why would they buy it up here? Because you're never going to know the answer. But what you can know here is if someone keeps buying 100 lots and they're not getting any movement for it, if they stop doing so, that buying pressure's gone, whatever their motivation. And therefore, if you start to fall, the whole idea of being short at 44 was a good idea. It was just a case of taking the information on that was actually going on, someone buying hundreds, and saying, well, if they stop, now my idea of selling 44 is even better because part of the reason we're not moving away is because of this. So it helps you then add information to a trade that you're looking for rather than be a reason to start questioning what someone else wants to do and question why you want to be in that trade. It's about the way the market trades that tells you whether you should be taking this trade on or not. So shortish one today, but really just to get people thinking about it, just almost if nothing else, save yourself wasting a lot of time sometimes of asking yourself questions about things you can't know the answer to. And when I say you can't know the answer to, what I mean is the answer to that can't directly create a trade and a trade that you can replicate. So someone buying a hundred lot, knowing why they're doing it, doesn't necessarily mean that a market is gonna go up or down from that. Knowing that someone's buying a hundred lot, whether they continue or not, does tell you a bit about where the market can go from there. So that's what I mean, you're trying to answer that side of it, what the market can do next, not why someone wants to act in a certain place.